It's the best leaders are listeners. As I have observed leadership, and as I have hung with leaders for now over 35 years, I've come to the conclusion that the best leaders are listeners. Now, we all suffer from three delusions, okay? We all do, I do. Uh, one is that we're a good driver. Huh? How, how many of you, come on, talk to me. Uh, 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 another one is we have a good sense of humor, that we're funny. And the, th and the third one is we're a good listener. And I, as a leader, thought I was a good listener uh, until I had a wake-up call. In fact, let me just share this with you. Of the 26 lessons in leadership gold that I allowed to bubble up to the top that are the most important lessons I've ever learned as a leader, of those 26, 17 of them I learned wrong. In other words, when people say, well, oh, wise man, how did you learn these lessons? Oh, wise man was a very stupid man. And I tried something that didn't work, and I had to literally put my life in reverse and back up. I had to do U-turns. I had to say, wait a minute, this, this is really not working. And, and this is one of them because in my formative years as a leader, I can remember talking to a lady in my organization, and, and we're just talking, and all of a sudden she gets real quiet. And, 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 and as she gets real quiet, all of a sudden I look at her, and I say, you, you stop talking. And she looked at me, dead set in the eyes, and said, John, you stopped listening. She said, I've been talking to you, and she said, you're looking around the room. She said, you're not focused on me. You're not, you're not listening to what I say. And I remember that day, I pulled away from that, and I said, I'm not a good listener. And I need to learn how to walk slowly through the crowd, and I need to have a, a, a leader's ear that understands where his or her people are, and I, I need to listen. I was like, I brought this card, I love this story. I, I, I was like, um, well, let me just read the story, and you'll, you'll catch it real quick. A couple of rednecks are out in the woods hunting. When one of them falls to the ground, he doesn't seem to be breathing, and his eyes are rolled back in his head. The other guy whips out his cell phone, calls 911, and he frantically says to the operator, Bubba is dead, Bubba is dead. What can I do? And the operator is calm and has a soothing voice, and she says, just take it easy. I can help. First, let's make sure he's dead. There's a silence, and then a shot is heard. <laughs> the guy's voice comes back on the line and says, okay, now what? <laughs> he heard, but he didn't listen. And I, I wonder how many times I, I, I've kind of I've been like Bubba. Here, here's the way I've discovered it works. Here's, here's the way it works. Leaders listen, learn, and then lead. They listen, they learn, and then they lead. You see, the... Best, list, the best leaders are good because they know where their people are. They know what their people are thinking. They understand their people. And how do they understand their people? Because they walk slowly through the crowd. They have become consensus leaders. They, they have a sense of where their people are. There's no such thing as being lonely at the top because they're down at the bottom walking with the people. They're talking to them. They're not isolated. They're not withdrawn. They, they, they listen they learn, and then they lead. And here's what I have discovered. What I have discovered is that when I listen, problems that potentially could be big are often cut off at the pass. Why? Because, because I, I listen and I heard what the issue was before the issue really became the issue. I have an organization called Enjoy Stewardship Services. It's, a, it's an organization that basically raises um, billions of dollars for churches across America in, in helping them buy land, etc. Okay. John Hall is the president of Enjoy Stewardship Services, and John has a wonderful practice that he and I cooperate on and work on, and that is John Hall, whenever we're working with a congregation, midway through that, quote, 
campaign, that stewardship emphasis, John Hall calls him on the phone, the president talking to the pastor, the leader, and he's basically asking him the question, how are we doing? Could we be doing something better? Is there something we could change? Are we meeting your needs? Now, he doesn't have to make that call. I, I suppose that we do a pretty good job and he could wait through the contract. He doesn't have to, I suppose, call him at all. But John understands something that I understand and that is the greatest way to keep problems from escalating is to be a listener. It's not only a, a way to, to, to keep problems from escalating, it's also an incredible way to learn and grow. Everything I know today, I know because I listened. I ask questions. You know, when I'm doing the talking, I'm do, do, doing any learning, same with you. But when I'm listening, and when I have a heart to listen, when I have a mind to listen, and, and do you realize the empowerment it brings your people as a leader when they know that you really listen to them? 12 years ago, we, we moved to Atlanta. We moved all of our offices here. And, and the African-American community is so am amazing in this city. And, and because I had very little experience with African-Americans, I, I wanted to know them better. I wanted to know their journey better. And so I was committed when I moved here to really, to really have a, 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 the understanding that I felt that I needed, that I didn't have. And, and I remember I, I talked to one of the gatekeepers of that community, and I said, would it be possible every other month if I could have a lunch with some of the leading African-Americans in this city and, and just sit down with them? And, and all I want to do is ask them questions. And, and I said, every other month, if you could have another group come in, I said, in a year or a year and a half, I think I could, I think I could really understand and, and, and really learn a lot from them. And I, I kid you not, every other, every other month for about 18 months, I would sit down with these amazing people and I would ask them to tell me their stories. And, and they were surprised because they thought when they got together we'd have a lunch and I'd do a teaching session. And there was no teaching, I, di I didn't want to do any teaching, I wanted to do some learning. And I would ask them questions and every time I would walk away amazed by their journey, amazed at what they've gone through, totally having inside priorities just adjusted in my own life. And, I, and as I look back on that ex ex experience, what I'm saying to you is, is, is just very simple. You need to go back to your people, you need to go back to your group, you need to go back to the department you oversee, you need to go back to your company, you need to go back to your church, your organization, you need to go back and you need to sit down with your key people and tell them that you want to be a listening leader. Now, if you haven't listened to them a lot, get ready for a little bit of pushback. But I'm here to tell you, when we talk about empowerment, the greatest empowering thing that a leader can do is walk slowly through the crowd, listen, learn, and then lead. The best leaders are listeners.